So black beans are one of those things that I always have in my cabinet, but I always find myself buying more every time I go to the grocery store. So today's special is black beans. We are gonna start by making spicy black bean burgers, which have a really cool, interesting ingredient in them. And then we're also gonna be making black bean corn and poblano quesadillas. So get out your can opener, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with the sauce. And the sauce is a combination of some mayonnaise and some pickled jalapeno brine. And we're also gonna use some of the jalapenos as toppings for the burgers. And I always find that the brine for pickles or jalapenos, stuff like that, is definitely a secret weapon because I like to um, use it as part of my seasoning for potato salad. Like when the potatoes are just coming out of the pot and they're super hot, um, I like to pour a little bit of pickle brine over them at that stage, and it just helps to give them like a little extra layer of flavor. Now I'm just gonna take some of the brine and give it a good little mix. I'm gonna set these aside, and then I'm gonna go grab my food processor and a few ingredients. You wanna grab some, here's the spoiler alert, tortilla chips, because that's gonna help bind the burgers together and it's gonna give it that really good toasted corn flavor. Um, and you're also gonna wanna grab black beans. Go ahead and drain and rinse them. And you're gonna need an egg, some chili powder, salt, and pepper. Again, this is gonna be the binder, part of the binder for the burger. So we're gonna use this and an egg to help everything kind of stick together. But this is great because not only is it adding a little bit of extra salt, but it is adding that really good toasted corn flavor. Process this until finely ground, which will take about a minute. All right, now I'm gonna grab four scallions from my jar here, um, and I'm gonna give them just a rough chop, add them to the food processor, and pulse 10 times. Mm. I drained and then rinsed these black beans earlier, which is very important, because there's a lot of extra stuff um, sometimes that can be hanging out in the cans. Now they're nice and clean black beans for our burgers. So I'm gonna add that directly to the food processor. I'm gonna add one egg. You can crack this into a bowl just to ensure you don't get any um, shells or in anything like that, but I'm gonna live dangerously today. I'm gonna go right into the processor and a little bit of chili powder, which is great because it has, chili powder has some cumin in it, so you get a little bit more bang for your buck. Some pepper. And finally, some salt. All right, so now I'm gonna pulse this for about 15 pulses until the black bean mixture is finely chopped. So you want it to be pretty smooth, but a little bit coarse, just to give you a little bit of texture in the burger. Mm -hmm. I can smell the tortilla chips, it smells so good. I'm just gonna transfer the black bean mixture here to a plate and that'll make it a little bit easier to divide it into some patties. Sort of looks like a science experiment at this point. It's not. Divide it evenly into four portions. And now you just get your hands in there or have some helpers help you at this point. And you don't have to worry, like beef, you don't have to worry about overworking it because it's black beans and they came together that quickly. Dan, check it out. Four patties have been made. I am gonna go clean up, wash my hands, but right now these need to hang out in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes just to kind of help them set up and get ready for cooking. All right. So again, that was 10 minutes that these were in the fridge. Um, and you definitely could keep them in there longer if you needed to. But the minimum is about 10 minutes. And again, it just gives them a chance to firm up um, and get ready for cooking. So 
I have a nonstick skillet here and I'm gonna heat up a couple tablespoons of some vegetable oil until shimmery. And then I'm gonna add the burgers and cook them four minutes per side until nice and well browned. look perfect. Um, I'm going to use two spatulas because sometimes when I have delicate things like this it just helps to kind of ensure it easily transfers over. And they're not too delicate but they're delicate enough. Oh my goodness. It smells like tortilla chip, black bean, heaven right now. It's sort of scary how much these look like regular burgers but um, I just wanted to mention, so I went ahead, sliced some tomato. I've got my jala pickled jalapeno slices from earlier. I have some butter lettuce there. And then I went ahead and took that mayo mixture with the pickled jalapeno brine, and I just put that on the buns. So now, I think we should assemble these and eat. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It looks like a burger, but it's black beans. Okay, let's, let's tuck in. Mmm, mmm, that is a game changer in the burger department. I don't know if I have black beans all over my face. Gives me character. Dan says no. I'm excited for you to try this one, but before you go anywhere, come on back because we are going to go make a black bean corn and poblano quesadilla. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. I have a couple cheeses that I'm gonna grab, some goat cheese and some cheddar. And then also while I'm at the fridge, I'm gonna grab a poblano chili, an ear of corn, and I'm gonna grab an onion as well. And as you can imagine, the cheddar's gonna help for that melty, gooeyness. And then the goat cheese is a little surprising for a quesadilla, but it adds like a little bit of tangy creaminess, so it's really delicious. All right, and then I'm gonna crumble this goat cheese and give it a toss. All right, I'll put the cheese aside and let's talk about knife work. So I have an ear of corn here, um, but if you can't find any good corn right now um, or if you don't feel like going to the grocery store and you have frozen, um, you can totally use that. So when I take kernels of corn off the cob. There's a few different ways you can do it. Number one, you can start like I'm starting with a huge mess to clean up. And my favorite way to do it is to lay down a clean dish towel. And you just, if you feel like this is a little too wobbly, go ahead and cut the bottom of the, of the cob off so that you have a nice flat surface. Put that right in the middle of, um, as I said, clean dish towel. And what you want to do is run your knife down the um, side of the cob. I always try to get them in big planks, but I'm not really succeeding at that today. All right. So this is a poblano chili, and these are so delicious. Um, they add a little bit of spice but nothing too crazy. And if you can't find a poblano chili in your grocery store, um, you can use a bell pepper um, and maybe add a little bit of jalapeno into it. But if you see, I am taking the seeds out and that's gonna help to control the overall spiciness of the poblano. Um, I have just a regular old onion here. If you had a white onion, if you had Vidalia or red, use that. And we're gonna finally chop the onion. So what I like to do is take the stem off, keep the root intact, and peel the outer layer of paper off. Now we're gonna finally chop it. So what I like to do is I like to slice horizontally first. You wanna take the palm of your hand, with your knife parallel to the cutting board, you're gonna make long slices. Then, going in the opposite direction, run your knife 
across the onion. All right, and then using this part of your finger, whatever that's called, knuckle, you use that sort of as your insurance and you use the blade right here, kind of against that, and you make a claw. And go slow here, you don't have to go fast. Culinary school, we had a teacher. Oh, he drove me crazy. Um, but he would walk around, I'd probably get like a C minus for this, but he'd walk around after we were done prepping our veg and he would measure this and he would make ridicule you and make fun of you in front of the whole class. So that was fun. Okay, professor. That one's a little bit better. All right, now I'm gonna heat up some vegetable oil until shimmering, and then we're gonna cook our vegetables, our onion, our poblano, and corn for about seven minutes until nice and softened. All right, so the vegetables are nicely softened and they're starting to brown. Um, so now I'm gonna add the black beans. And the black beans I already drained and rinsed really well. So I'm also gonna add a little bit of water just to kind of help loosen things up a bit. So I'm gonna let this cook for about one minute. After one minute, I'm gonna take it off heat and using a potato masher, just mash the whole mixture until smooth. All right, so this is almost ready. As you can see, the water is almost fully evaporated. It's pretty much evaporated. Turn off the heat. And as I said, with a potato masher, just go in here and mash everything together as much as you can. It's not gonna be super smooth. And if you wanted to make this ahead of time for this recipe, you could totally make this mixture first put it in the fridge, let's say like on a Sunday, and if you want to make these on a Tuesday, I would maybe heat it up a little bit, maybe in the microwave, and then um, proceed with the rest of the recipe. But this is a great make-ahead option. And yes, it's a nonstick pan, and yes, this is metal, but I'm trying to be careful. So I have some 10-inch tortillas, and I'm gonna grab four of them, and put the filling, do a quarter per tortilla. What I like to do is just get it in there first and then I'll smooth it out. But what's important is to remember to leave at least a half inch border just to ensure everything stays inside as you cook the quesadilla. You actually could maybe even make the quesadilla for make ahead all the way up to the stuffed portion and then pop it in the skillet once you're ready to make it. So two options for make ahead, how about that? All right, so now just Go along, use the back of the spoon, just get it all in a single layer. I do wanna mention, we're gonna use that skillet again. Don't put it in the sink. So now, divide the cheese mixture evenly over the bean mixture, and just sprinkle it right on top, being sure to leave that same half inch border. Take the other half, Top that and press down a little firmly, but you don't want to do what I just did and have the filling pop out because that's what I was just saying not to do. All right, so we're almost done. I'm going to heat up some oil and we're going to cook the quesadillas two at a time until golden brown, flipping them after about a minute or so. Also, like if you had Monterey Jack on hand, you didn't have cheddar cheese, feel free to substitute what you have. Just make sure one of the cheeses is melty and one of the cheeses is creamy and tangy.
I'm going to grab a board. I'll arrange them. Saving one to try, obviously. And other things you could put on the board would be like some cilantro, um, leaves, some lime wedges, stuff like that. All right, I'm going to go in. Mmm, that goat cheese, that's money. This is so delicious. The poblano, it's so good. You know it's there, it's not too spicy. And the sweetness from the corn and the black beans, I mean, you can't go wrong. I hope this has gotten you out of your black bean wheelhouse and hopefully you can try these recipes for spicy black bean burgers and black bean corn and poblano quesadillas. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe.